How to play finger style or finger picking guitar. Book 2, Lesson 8. How to play Street Spirit Fade Out by Radiohead. For anyone who's just stumbled across this lesson, this lesson is part of a full professionally written guitar course that's completely free and you can find a playlist for all the lessons in book one and book two down below in the description and you can get the PDF ebook that contains the tab for all these lessons completely free at www.ebooksforguitar.com For those of you who've been following this course and might not know this tune Unfortunately, I can't put a copy of it into this video for copyright reasons. However, I've done the next best thing by including a link to the original video down below in the description. So, if you want, you can go away and listen to the tune a few times so you've got a better idea of what you're learning. Just as a point of interest, I've noticed Radiohead play this with a plectrum. However, most guitarists I know prefer to play this finger style. Right, let's get on with the lesson. Overview From a learning point of view, this tune is quite paradoxical because it's easy to learn, but also hard to learn. To explain that, it's hard to learn because each chord is constantly changing. So you have to learn each of those fingerings. However, it's also easy to learn because it's quite repetitive. So you only have to learn a few chords that are then repeated over and over throughout the tune. Looking at an overview, you'll notice the tune is made of five different sections. The intro, the verse, a chorus, a fill and an outro. And underneath the tune, there's an arrangement telling you what order to play these parts in. And it's always important to look at the arrangement so you know what order to play the tune in. But also, by seeing different arrangements, you become more aware of how arrangements work and how they make the tune more interesting. And this you might find useful in the future if and when you start to write your own music. This tune is in 4-4 four, four time, which means there's four crotchet beats per bar. However, in this tune, most of the notes are semiquavers. And what this means is, for every crotchet, there's four semiquavers. So, per bar in this tune, there's actually 16 notes. And looking at the tab, you'll notice I've put above the first bar a four count with three dots as well as the count representing the semiquavers. And to help you follow the lesson more easily, I've reflected the semiquavers in the metronome beat, which is closer to a drum beat really. And this is how that sounds. And here that is again, with me counting over the top. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, because the tune is in semiquavers, it's quite quick to play. However, because they've set the tune at a nice slow 70 beats per minute, it's not too quick. So you might find the tune a little difficult to get the hang of at first. However, with practice, you'll probably find it quite easy. Even though we'll be learning this tune with a metronome, so you can join in and play along with me. The original recording doesn't have a metronome beat or any way of keeping time until the very end of the song where drums come in. However, 
they keep very precise time. So even if you're practicing this tune without a metronome, try to keep the time as smooth and precise as you can. Right, let's start by learning the first bar, which once you can play it, you'll be able to play half the tune because it's repeated throughout. And this first bar is based on an A minor, which is where we start. And then we add and remove notes to create the tune. But before we start building the tune, let's just try the finger picking pattern with the A minor. And in this particular tune, you play the bottom three strings with the primary or the thumb and you play the top three strings with the index, middle and annular respectively. And we're playing primary, index, annular, index, middle, index, annular, index, middle, index, annular, index, middle, index, primary, index. And hopefully you notice the pattern that the index finger plays every other note. Here that is again. Primary, index, annular, index, middle, index, annular, index, middle, index, annular, index, middle, index, primary, index. Here that is being played twice with metronome beats at a nice slow 50 beats per minute. And it's got a two bar introduction in case you'd like to try and play along. And here that is again, in case you want to try and play along. Taking a look at the first line, which is just the first bar repeated, you can see the notes that are changing are all on the B string. And firstly, you play the third fret, then you play the first fret, which is a standard A minor, and then you remove that finger to play an open B string. Here that is being played with a metronome beat at 50 beats per minute. Just watch and listen to it for the first time. You'll probably find you want to practice that first line at least a few times before you try it with the metronome. But when you're ready, here it is being played with the metronome at 50 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. Here that is again, one last time, at 50 beats per minute. And as you can see here, by learning that one bar, you've already learnt half the tune. Right, let's move on to the next bar you need to learn, which is the third bar in the verse. And this is based around an E minor, but 
you add the same notes you did earlier for the A minor, those being the third fret on the B string, the first fret on the B string, and the open B string, which is obviously a standard E minor. Here that bar is being played twice with a two bar introduction at 50 beats per minute. You can just watch and listen to it the first time. Again, you might want to pause the video here and practice that section for a while before moving on. But when you think you're ready, here's that bar again being played twice at 50 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. So you can try and play along with it. And if you want to try and play that again, here it is being played at 50 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. With the two bars you've learnt so far, you can already play most of the tune. So we'll try playing through the intro and the verse, just to bring together what you've learnt so far. And you'll notice the intro and the first line of the verse both have repeats, but we'll ignore those for now. And here that is again at the same speed with a two bar introduction in case you want to try and play along. Right, let's move on to the chorus. And to play the chorus, you only need to learn one new bar. And that's because most of the chorus consists of bars you've already learnt. So let's take a look at the new bar, which is the first bar of the chorus. And it mainly consists of a C major chord. And again, we're adding notes and taking them off the B string. So we'll play the third fret of the B string, then the first fret of the B string, which is a standard C, and then an open B string. So this is what that looks and sounds like.
and here that is again at 50 beats per minute with a two bar introduction in case you want to try and play along. And you'll notice that unlike the previous phrases we've learnt, we only play this for one bar. And that's because it always appears on its own, so you never play two bars in a row. Here that is again being played at 50 beats per minute with a two bar introduction in case you want to try and play along. This C-shape pattern only appears twice in the whole tune and that's in the first bar of the chorus and the fifth bar of the chorus. So let's bring the chorus together and try to play it at 50 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. You'll notice there's no repeats to look out for with the chorus. Try and play along if you think you're ready. And here that is again with a two bar introduction in case you want to try and play along. We've more or less covered the whole tune now. We've just got to take a look at the fill and the outro. So, looking at the fill, the chords are very straightforward as we've covered them in previous sections. However, the finger picking pattern changes completely. So, you have to watch out for this. Because during the fill, you don't play either the top E string or the bottom E string the picking hand has to shift slightly. So the primary finger covers the A string, the index finger covers the D string, the middle finger covers the G string, and the annular finger covers the B string. And as we've done with all the previous sections, you have to remove and replace fingers to create the melody. On the positive side, the fill could be considered the same bar repeated as the second bar is identical to the first. Here's the fill being played so you can see how it should look and sound. If you feel you need to, you might want to pause the video here and practice that section for a few minutes. Otherwise, you can try playing along. Here it is at 50 beats per minute with a two bar introduction.
And here that is again, one last time. If you struggle or have difficulty with the fill because of the change of finger picking pattern, you can actually just use the intro without a repeat because it's the same chord and very few people would notice the difference. The outro shouldn't take very much explanation as you just play the intro riff once, which was the riff based on the A minor and you then finish on the open A string, allowing the notes to ring off naturally. Here's what that looks and sounds like. Here that is again, one last time, at 50 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. Tips for faster chord changes. The first one is for people with wider fingers. Some people find that they can play two strings with one finger, or they struggle to place two fingers down next to each other on two strings, as you require with the A minor. And in this case, you can replace the two fingers with one finger. So for example, the A minor, rather than playing it with the first, second and third finger, you just need to play it with the first and the second finger, with the second finger covering the D and the G string. Now, this isn't for everyone, but I'm pointing out here because I'm aware on YouTube, I'm speaking to a very wide audience. So I'm sure there's people out there who would find this tip really useful. The second tip is for everyone. If you look at the chords being used, especially the A and the C, you'll notice that the second fret on the D string is being played with the second finger, which means the finger doesn't need to move. So you can leave the second finger in place if you want to. And you can extend this to the E chords. You'll notice with the E chords, the grey note isn't played. So you can remove this and play the second fret on the D string with the second finger again. So you can leave the second finger in place throughout the tune. Right. Let's try playing everything we've learnt and we'll go through without using the arrangement and without the repeats, starting from the intro and ending at the outro. So here it is at 50 beats per minute with a two bar introduction.
Here that is again, but faster at 60 beats per minute with a two bar introduction so you can try and play along. And that's it for today's lesson. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you're new to the channel, and if you did enjoy it, please like, subscribe and hit the bell icon. And then you'll be notified when I upload new lessons. And if you haven't yet got the tablature for the lessons, go to www.ebooksforguitar.com and there you can get the PDFs of book one and book two of the Fingerstar Guitar course with all the tab in. And I've put a link to a YouTube playlist of all the lessons for book one and all the lessons for book two down below in the description so you can see any lessons you've missed. Thanks again for watching.